Greetings and welcome to the Badger Cave's West Wing, where our stealthy polecats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fucks to discuss Slam Bam Badger style. Your sinuous hosts for this evening are me, Hannah, Max, Scott, and Allison, along with our news team, which is Scott and Allison. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but they're also here to discuss the topics. This evening, we'll be covering the following topics. Proving that ISIS hurts men, too, the radical Islamic group stones four men for adultery over 30 days ago, and we're just now learning of it. 100 women show up naked to protest Trump because boobs. Nottinghamshire makes harassing a woman hate speech. Helicopter parents may harm kids, a doy. And Frank Cho gets tired of having his art policed by social justice warrior writers and walks away from his contract, creating Wonder Woman covers. And finally, Sony stockholders take note. The patron bonus story for this week's is Sony's decision that they haven't lost enough money on Ghostbusters, they may feel the need to lose even more. <laughs> Ghostbusters will have yet another sequel. If you want to enjoy further personalized discussion with the Badgers on select topics such as Sony's Ghostbusters seppuku, be, please become a patron at patreon.com forward slash honeybadgerradio. Now, here are the polecats, Scott and Allison, with a summary of the news. Oh, and Max, apparently. And ahead, Max. Max. <laughs> <laughs> he totally has best voice. Yes. Oh, yes. Max is <laughs> alpha voice. Hmm. I'm going to read the rest of this in the solid snake voice. No, I'm totally kidding. Anyways, the Republican National Convention is currently taking place in Cleveland, oh, Cleveland, Ohio. Excuse me. It's been four weeks, guys. And along with that are distant yet audible cries of racism, Islamophobia, and bigotry for those who fall under the LGBT spectrum. But of all, no, excuse me. But above all else, the cries of sexism seem to be taking the gold this time around. Look, you can support, condemn, or be passive towards the Republican Party. Whichever side of that argument you fall on, I think most people will agree that the following act of condemnation seems as odd as it is ineffective. Last Sunday, an artist native to Cleveland, Ohio, named Spencer Tunick, organized an art project that would take place the day before the RNC, calling everything she says mean everything. The art project consisted of roughly 100 women standing completely naked in a field holding up circular mirrors to the sky. When Tunic put out this casting call back in May, roughly 1,800 women signed up to participate. What happened to the other 1,700 on Sunday is currently unknown, but if anybody has any clues to that, please let me know. Women of all different ages, shapes, and sizes came from as far away as Belgium to participate. When asked what the purpose of the art project was, their responses seemed to fall into two categories. To protest Trump and his treatment of women as well as his choice for Vice President, Mike Pence, who signed one of the nation's most restrictive abortion laws as governor of Indiana, and two, to take the opportunity to proudly show their bodies in a public space. Who would have thought? While Tunick was taking the photographs, he reportedly said the following. This is for you, and this is for our future. We will shine your light and power onto the RNC. We're going to shine the light of women into this arena. Apparently, Tunic has been organizing nude art installations since 1994 and has been planning this particular one for three years. On to the next story. Oh, God. What can you do but laugh at that? You know, because boobs. Trump right. is going down because boobs. All right, let's... let's let's. Uh... We found the cure, thank God. <laughs> no more Donald Trump. All right. Are we on to ISIS? Yep. All right. Uh, chilling pictures show ISIS militants savagely stoning four men to death for committing adultery in Iraq. Uh, according to a recent article written by Simon Tomlinson of DailyMail.com, four married men in Iraq were stoned to death by members of ISIS after convicted of adultery in a Sharia court. Additionally, there are a number of photographs included with the article depicting the horrific events leading up to and including the execution itself. Under Sharia law, married men or women can be stoned to death for having sex outside of wedlock, while those who are unmarried face being lashed, the article says. As is often the case with stonings, the prisoners most likely suffered unbearable agony until their skulls finally ended up being crushed. Generally speaking, stoning is a method of edu education. Excuse me. Execution is frequently reported in areas controlled by Islamist groups across the Middle East, such as areas in Syria and Iraq, which are controlled by ISIS. 
in areas in Afghanistan which are controlled by the Taliban. In addition, children are often forced to attend such public executions. Okay, so I wanted to say one thing. The most recent research into stoning uh, seems to find that men are the majority of victims. This is something that you don't hear um, in the mainstream media, that you know, it, if, if, a, if a woman goes to jail, a man will be stoned for the same crime. So I just wanted to put that out there, because like I said, you don't hear it in mainstream media that men are the majority victims of stoning. But anyway, let's get on to the next one. Uh, Nottinghamshire Police Makes Harassment of Women a Hate Crime. Uh, an article posted by Tom Norton on NottinghamPost.com discusses how the Nottinghamshire police have become the first police force in England to classify misogyny as a hate crime. To further this end, they have also spent the last three months providing misogyny hate crime training to selected officers. Chief Constable Sue Fish is pleased with the results so far. I'm delighted that we are leading the way towards tackling misogyny in all, in all its forms, she says. What women face often on a day daily basis is absolutely unacceptable and extremely distressing. It should probably be noted that the Nottinghamshire Police's working definition of misogyny is dislike of, contempt for, or ingrained prejudice against women, which is a far cry from the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition, i.e. the hatred of women. And according to the police force, the hate crime definition can be understood as incidents against women motivated by an attitude of a man towards a woman and includes behavior targeted towards a woman by men simply because she is a woman. <laughs> and they did this. What's interesting about this is when we uh, entered the Nottingham Shower Castle at the top, they had like a series of caves. By the end, well, they, 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 the, the time we got to the bottom of the caves, they made wolf whistling a hate crime, well, at least against women. So it was an interesting experience. We go into a pub and we find out about it. In the very, very, what, what do you call it? Like province? Not, not province, like county or whatever, uh, lo locale that we were in, we were staying in, they made that a hate crime. <laughs> it's almost like insanity follows us. So we're in a bizarre world, this is for sure. You know what, Max, why don't you make your comment on Nottinghamshire, because I don't think we're coming back to this one. Nottinghamshire. How much more English can you get? No, but <laughs> seriously, when it comes to, like, what falls under the definition of misogyny? They say that these uh, police officers are attending training to understand how to classify misogyny um, and how to determine what is and what isn't a hate crime. Now, it, like in my opinion, the way that this can turn out is uh, one of two ways. It can either be absolutely uh, Orwellian and terrifying, or it could be absolutely nothing. It could just be like, hey, we're here to tackle misogyny in any way, and this is just a virtue signal. Otherwise, it can be sort of another classic instance where... Um, the definition of something can be so broad that it can include things that are very, very mundane and usual uh, uh, just in terms of social contact between men, men and women. So I, I don't know if any of you guys know what some of the stuff might include, if there's anybody out there that lives in Nottinghamshire uh, that works with the police force so that we can understand what is included under this so that we can find out if this is just virtue signaling or something that we must be a lot more worried about, you know? Um, I, I have more information on this, but let's get through the rest of the news items and maybe we can come back to it. Because I just realized that there is something more that we can say about this particular issue. All right, moving on. Uh, hovering parents may harm kids. Shocking, I know. Uh, in an article ripper... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. In an article written by Robert Pride for WebMD News, he says that a new study has been published in the Journal of Personalities suggesting that children with intrusive parents who push too hard for good grades may be more prone to uh, becoming uh, become highly self-critical or anxious and depressed. The study's leader, Ryan Hong from the National University of Singapore, went on to say that as a result, the child may become afraid of making the slightest mistake and will blame him or herself for not being perfect, referring to the expectations that the child's parents place on them to academically succeed at all costs. Hong also noted, our findings indicate that in a society emphasizing academic excellence, which is the situation in Singapore, parents tend to set increasingly unrealistically high expectations on their children. Learning always involves making mistakes and learning from them, so when parents become intrusive, they may take these opportunities away. Okay, well I don't think this surprises anyone. Of yeah, course, shocking. interestingly enough, on CBC, in between talking about the apple crop, I saw more 
more stuff on how games are hurting boys and uh, or hurting people. Like they're teaching kids to be violent. Of course, more people saying, "Oh yeah, there's the scientific consensus is that games teach people or boys to be or kids to be violent." Of course, there is no consensus on that. And it's like the other thing that when when I saw that, I was like, "Well, what about how parents treat their children?" We never talk. We don't really talk about that. Or how about uh, directing a, basically what is wartime propaganda against boys? You know, how does that affect their behavior? But these are the things we never really talk about it. Uh, go ahead, Hannah. Say something to this story because I think it's pretty short. Yeah, it's, it's it's really very simple. You you know your kids. You know what your kids can do, and and you know when they're they're genuinely slacking and when they're doing their best. And that's basically what you push them to. It's not wrong to push your kids to do their best. It's wrong to push your kids to do something that is beyond their capacity or something that they hate and and take a job. You know prepare themselves for a job that they're never going to want or things like that uh, but it's it's not wrong to if your if your kid can get you know B's it's not wrong to bitch at your kid if they're getting D's instead it's not wrong to you know keep make sure your kids putting their their homework in and everything it, it becomes a problem when the parent starts living through their child and that's you know, it's. I hate seeing stories like this because so often that they do not differentiate between parents who mentor their kids and who do teach their kids to strive to be the best they can be and to to push themselves to an extent, versus parents that that like harass their kids basically, you know, and and are psychologically abusive in the course of it by by placing unrealistic expectations and then punishing their kids for not meeting them. Okay. Thank you, Hannah. Shall we uh, do the final item, which is Frank Cho yes. getting tired of having his art policed and walking <laughs> away from Wonder Woman? Yeah. Uh, Frank Cho, uh, the article is Frank Cho walks off Wonder Woman after sixth cover. Um, and from it Bleeding is by cool. yeah. on Bleeding Cool Magazine, or, or BleedingCool.com, excuse me. Uh, the article is written by Rich Johnston. Uh, and it goes, and there I was thinking the big news was going to be this week's revelation that Wonder Woman had some same gender relationships when she was young. Hello, people from The Guardian. Frank Cho was one of a number of A-list comic book artists commissioned by DC Comics to create 24 variant covers for the first year of the relaunched twice-monthly comic books. In Frank's case, that was Wonder Woman. Uh, infamous online for his outraged sketch covers... Uh, both parodying sexism and criticism of sexism, this was a controversial choice, with many expressing their disappointment. But as the first covers emerged, that disappointment went away. But possibly not with Wonder Woman writer Greg Rucka. And as a result, Frank Cho is walking off the title after its sixth issue and variant cover. He tells Bleeding Cool, All the problem lies with Greg Rucka. Everyone loves my Wonder Woman covers and wants me to stay. Greg Rucka is the only one who has any problem with the covers. Greg Rucka has been trying to alter and censor my artwork since day one. Greg Rucka thought my Wonder Woman number three cover was vulgar and showed too much skin and has been spearheading censorship, which is baffling since my Wonder Woman image is on model and shows the same amount of skin as the interior art. And it's a variant cover, and he should have no editorial control over it, but he does. What the fuck? I tried to play nice, not rock the boat, and do my best... <clears throat> do my best on the covers, but Greg's weird political agenda against me and my art has made my job impossible. Wonder Woman was the only reason I came over to DC Comics. To DC's credit, especially art director Mark Chiarello, they have been, they have been very accommodating, but they are caught between a rock and a hard place. I just wanted to be left alone and do my Wonder Woman variant covers in peace, but Greg Rucka is, a hostile power, is on a hostile power trip and causing unnecessary friction over variant covers. Uh, Greg Rucka declined to comment, the first three Wonder Woman variant covers by Cho are showed below in order and the original art for comparison. Take it away, Max. Yeah, um, from what I understand, I think they're, like, obviously I disagree with this, and, I, like, you know, the usual spiel about artists seem, should be able to uh, express themselves within reason, you know. But, um, I don't know, maybe, like, for people that actually read comics, like Brian uh, could maybe educate me on whether or not this is the case. Because of the nature of the comic book industry as it is right now, um, very few are being bought, and it only seems like 
the, the only times that the sales of uh, comic books seem to go up is when there's a huge controversy surrounding them, like with Lady Thor or new Black Iron Man, right? It's like the first issue uh, breaks records for that particular year, and then immediately after that it goes down. So it seems, I don't know, just maybe confirm whether or not this is true, but like if you were to continue to do these covers compared to whether or not uh, he actually had his art censored, uh, would it mean that uh, like the the profits would actually go up if there was a little bit more controversy surrounding it and they were pissing off people like us compared to if he were just allowed to do whatever he wanted to do? Does that make are, sense? Are you asking me um, a, that question? Yeah. Which is essentially, do you think that this is a publicity stunt to sell more books? Um, and that uh, Frank Cho is somehow complicit, or, or may, or at least the uh, the people who are writing and making this happen are doing so on purpose in the hopes that it will sell books. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of. It, it, well, yeah, no, I, exactly that. But I just don't want people to think I'm trying to be a conspiracy theorist. I'm just saying, like, if, if would that make sense considering the way that the comic book industry is right now? Right. Uh, what I I, for, I want to show you guys the offending image, by the way, just because <laughs> there are people who want to know what the what the offend. This is the one that that dude got all freaked out about and said it was Greg like Rucka. just just vulgar. Yes. I can I can see it, just vulgar. See okay, how yeah. spread eagle she is right there. Well, the, I think that some of the issue that he had was there's a panty shot, according to him. Of course, that's yeah. there's that's not a panty shot. That pan, unless no. they're granny panties. Um, in fact, he could probably have gotten away with not having any fabric on her ass at all from that angle, uh, considering yeah. the way her leotard, her on-model leotard lies across her ass. So, I mean, it's... Well, first of all, uh, this is not... Wh what was the word? Perverted? Uh, yeah. Provocative? Vulgar. Provo vulgar. This is not vulgar, vulgar in the slightest. Yeah, it's vulgar and disgusting. Ruka, uh, obviously... Absolute, a... Absolutely haram. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, and uh, we I read a little bit more into this controversy, and apparently Frank Cho said that he had a verbal agreement that his artwork wouldn't be policed by uh, an editor, uh, like he would have full creative control over his variant covers. Um, but unfortunately, Ruka got in writing that he would have control over the artwork, um, and there are people on the Mary Sue who are saying that, oh, that makes it, that means it's either DC is at fault or uh, Frank Cho is at fault. But ultimately, the person driving uh, Frank Cho off of this project is Ruka. And he's not doing it because this is actually vulgar, because it is not vulgar. And it is on model. This is, he, Frank Cho has not made any changes to the, um, the costume style that they're using for Wonder Woman. And the, the images in the actual comic book are not, not less, cl are more clothed or, or less, or they're, they're basically like this in terms of how much skin she's showing. Uh, so yeah, Frank Cho didn't get in the contract in writing, it was just a verbal agreement. So yeah, they have to side with Ruka because they gave that to him, that editorial control in writing. But still, it does come down to the fact that Ruka is not compromising. And if if Ruka was actually compromising or actually saying, you know, this is being reasonable in his requests on the artwork and not referring to something like this as being um, uh, lewd or 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 uh, he, he, this would this situation wouldn't exist. So yeah, this Frank Ruka is precipitating this, and he's well, doing it using yes, legitimately the control he was given by DC, but still he's precipitating it. He is using what power he has to enforce censorship on Frank Cho, and Frank Cho's not having any of it. Uh, and to answer Max's point, I don't think that uh, speculating that this might be some sort of scam or con is incorrect. I think it, it's entirely possible. Commerce hasn't changed. There's always been hucksters and cons, and it very well be that this is all just a ruse. I don't think Frank Cho is in on it, but it might all be like a lot of this stuff, this false controversy. It, 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 that, that is a ruse to, to drive sales. And I apologize for getting in your way, Scott. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, well, uh, as, as uh, to the point of the ruse thing, um, Ruck is kind of a shit. Uh, just he has a history of being a shit. Uh, oh. This is this is part of the course for Rucka. Um, so no surprises there on that regard. Um, but the thing is, though, um, when if we're looking at this from a uh, from a fault point of view, if we're, we're trying to find the root of the issue here, basically what happens is Rucka is a writer. Um, Cho is an artist, and uh, 
the thing the thing is though before it even gets to either of them DC's editorial staff has to make the decisions on character design um, you know plot layouts all those kind of things and lay out a, uh, a, a framework for these artists and the writers to work through so this is something that DC already decided upon their editorial staff had already decided on the look of the character so to me this sounds like um, this is Rucka grinding an axe because he doesn't like the things that Cho has said. He's basically like, oh, well, I'm, you know, it's like, I, I kind of imagine Rucka's like, well, I'm going to get this dang dirty misogynist off my book one way or the other. You know, it's just like, I, obviously, he hasn't said that. I don't know that he said that. But in my mind, given the past history of Greg Rucka and his kind of shittiness and his disdain for, for Cho, this seems kind of like where it's going. But, but, you know, like you said, Cho is using the artwork that was given to him has as a you know as a here is what she's supposed to look like this is what we need you to draw so there shouldn't have been any problem this should have been a complete non-issue as far as Rucka was concerned and he like you know and like Joe said Rucka should not have had any kind of editorial input on it um, because DC had already made the decision to have Cho do the artwork based on the editorial's decision of how the character is supposed to look so this this whole thing is fucking ridiculous, and I think it. I, I honestly like, from my own point of view, from what I've, from what I know of the people involved, this just seems like Rucka being an asshole trying to fucking grind an axe against Cho. So, that's my two cents on that. So there's that. Okay, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to add, uh, Max, <clears throat> as far as like, you know, to add on to Allison's point about whether or not this is done specifically to drum up sales, uh, from the people who I've spoken to that work in the industry professionally. Generally, there are there's like a two. Um, think of it like this: it goes through two filters. You have the executives at the top, the board, right? The people who run the company. Generally, they're just trying to find a way to sell more books, but they're not really concerned with specifically creating drama or um, you know uh, upsetting the fans or whatever to sort of create interest. They just want to sell. They just look at the numbers, and that's all they care about. So what they do is they try to find people using editors and so on that are going to essentially, uh, you know, give a, a, a shot to the arm to their sales of their books. And then you have the people in middle management and the writers and artists. Those are the people that are that think um, they get jobs in comics, and they think that what what comics need is more of their politics, or that they want to. Uh, make things the way that they believe it should be because I think in many cases, a lot of the times, at least when we've reported on comics before, the artists and writers that are doing this, they really don't want to do this. This is just all they can get. And they're resentful and angry, and what they do is they, they basically try to put their um, their politics in the books. And this is, you can look at Marvel for really good examples, but DC is not, um, they're not uh, innocent of this either. And what, you just have a conflict of what's going on, and then what initially happens is that everybody's talking about it. It gets on all the websites. You see it on daytime TV. So the execs think, oh, this might work, but they don't really look at it beyond that, and then the sales typically plummet, especially when they try you know, progressive crap in the books. As far as this Wonder Woman cover goes, I think that, um, again, the execs probably did not know or care that Frank Cho was making sketch covers that were pissing off social justice warriors because it doesn't involve money. It's just something that he was doing on his own time. But they do know that Frank Cho gets people to buy his the books because his artwork is really good. He's done covers of a large sort of encyclopedia books, you know, that you, that they, the DK publishing ones. He's done the covers for those that you can buy in bookstores. So he his work sells, and that's all they care about. But, you know, Ruka, as Scott pointed out, just had an axe to grind. So it, it sort of goes through a double layer thing, according to people who I've talked to that are in the industry. And uh, to, I'll, I will point out the, the double standard, Hannah, um, unless you want to mention that. You know what? I'm going to let you do that. But that's all. I, that's, that's basically the answer to that. Plus, yeah, I think, I think way, it's kind of an important question. I mean, it, it, does, does he think that men's bodies are lewd too or does he only think that women's bodies are lewd because if he's calling somebody else a misogynist for putting women's bodies on display but he doesn't see a problem with doing the same thing with men's bodies if anyone is a misogynist in the equation it's him because he's considering women's bodies to be lewd but men's bodies are perfectly okay to put on display 
Well, you know, my patriarchy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would turn that around on him real quick because it's just, it just strikes me as a, a massive double standard. I don't think anybody's bodies are lewd. I think if we're going to celebrate beauty, we should celebrate the beauty of both sexes. And I think if we're going to uh, proclaim that somebody is being exploited because their body is looked at, then we should protect both sexes from it. You know, which I, I don't think exploitation can be really accused when we're talking about a fictional character, a drawing of a fictional character. But I think both sexes' bodies are equally beautiful, and, and if we're going to call them lewd, they would be equally lewd. I just want to point out that this art is beautiful and the anatomy is well done. Yeah, it is. He is good at that. Notice that it was cropped. But they the only, actually yeah. cropped it. They, they cropped out they the cropped offensive... Out the the, the offensive part. And the cropping is shit. That's, I mean, I commented upon Brian thinking that Frank Cho had done the, the cropping, and I was like, this cropping is awkward and painful. And I didn't realize that it actually was Ruka who did it. The only thing that, that catches my eye in this is I think Frank Cho just had a, had a say, tried to be modest with that little flap of, uh, of um, un, or, uh, leotard over her ass. I, I think that it doesn't work. It just doesn't seem right. Um, because I don't think that's the way it would lie in that particular angle. And I think that was actually a, a nod to modesty on his part. You should have gone without it. Just let her ask the ass, let, let the ass go free, Frank Cho. <laughs> let it roam free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do we, <laughs> hashtag <laughs> gate. Hashtag, hashtag blue gate. gate. <laughs> Hashtag, hashtag, share, hashtag share them buns. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, Geek Variety, everybody. Share them buns. Wonder Bread. Hashtag peaches yeah, you, for me, <laughs> peaches for you, Wonder peaches for bread. free. <laughs> okay, right. speaking of ass, let's talk about Free tits. the fanny. <laughs> well, so that ass <laughs> Wow, wow, Max, really? <laughs> we had a good transition, you guys. Just totally ass-ended it. Oh. Um, yeah, well, said, now that we're talking about ass, let's talk about tits. You know? Yeah. The, you know because boobs don't vote Trump because boobs, you know. Yes, ass and titties. Hannah, Hannah, you had a comment about, uh, the, the well, the full set. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> the the uh, the Trump story just blows my mind. Um, every time he steps up to to talk about women the same way he would talk about men, to give women the same accountability and hold women to the same standards and treat women as if we are equally capable of meeting those standards, standards for accountability and standards for morality, standards for for ethics and so on as men. He gets called a misogynist. So essentially, we have women, and especially feminist groups, and, and of course his left-wing opponents, calling it misogyny to claim that women can do what men can do. It's, it's like the reverse feminism. As soon as Trump comes out, it's like, it's like there's reverse. And, and from what I've seen, this has gone on uh, his entire campaign. The worst of it had to be when he said, if a, a particular law existed and women violated that law, that there should be a penalty. And the reason that, that he got flack for saying that women who violate the law should face a penalty is because it was a, a hypothetical abortion law. So apparently, if women have an interest in violating the law, it's suddenly misogyny to say that women should be considered capable of living within the law. I mean, it, and it, it's it's suddenly misogyny to say that women should be held to the same legal standards as men because Trump. This actually really bothers me because we've gotten to a point now where feminists can claim that they argue that women are equal to men and then every step of the way, any time anybody in the public sphere treats women equally to men, if it is not to the advantage of feminist political organizations, they use the word misogyny to, to try to cut it down. And that's just absolute shit. You know, either we're equal or we're not. 
and and if we cannot be held to the same standards of morality, ethics, and and you know uh, 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 obedience to the law, then we're not we're not equal. So feminists need to man up when it comes to Trump. Now I guess I'm going to throw it to the floor with that. I I just want to know. What is the the sexist thing that Trump said or did? Because I don't know what it is. I haven't seen anything except the time that he insulted Rosie O'Donnell because Megyn Kelly tried to <coughs> put him on the spot and he just basically turned it into a joke. And I wouldn't even consider that to be sexist if he's just insulting individuals. So what did he do? There's two things. There, there's two things that he got really big uh, flack for. One of them was he was asked in an interview with Chris Matthews who made the hypothetical situation say if abortion was made illegal should women who then go have abortions face a punishment and he said yes there should be some form of punishment you know if it's illegal there has to be some form of punishment so then it was portrayed as Trump wants women punished for having abortions and it was really, really kind of tricky because he didn't actually say he wanted women punished punish for having abortions. He said, he answered, if this is illegal and women do it, should there be punishment? Well, then, yeah, you know, if it's illegal. That's, that's the first, well, it wasn't the first thing. The first thing was his um, campaign manager. There was a reporter, and i got to look here because I've got, I, I actually wrote about this and i got the story open and I can't remember which reporter it was. Um, who? Well, in, Michelle, in the Fields, meantime, Michelle Fields uh, yeah. actually went past his Secret Service uh, defense team and grabbed at him after being told by everybody around him to back off. And his campaign manager pulled her back by her clothing. He grabbed hold of her and pulled her back, and she lied and said that he had been really rough with her and thrown her to the ground and hurt her and bruised her and all this other shit. And there was this big deal um, about people wanting to hit Trump to fire him for that. And he didn't do it. And he, he stood up for him. And, of course, he's being called a misogynist because he's tolerating this so-called abuse of a woman. But the, the opposite of that, if that were to happen with Hillary Clinton and a man rushed past Secret Service to uh, assault Hillary because she did basically she grabbed at Trump you could see her in the video reaching for Trump if, if a man did that and Hillary's campaign manager had yanked him back and he complained about it he would be roasted in the press so but wait but yeah, Hannah but Hillary, standard Hillary didn't know though that that's not right so it's okay uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, so essentially the other thing that you mentioned was um was uh, when he called uh, Rosie O'Donnell a fat pig, right? He he said, well, he didn't even well, it was like Megyn Kelly framed a question like, uh, you know, you say bad things about women, calling them fat pigs, and he said only Rosie O'Donnell, and that was it got a laugh, you know that, but I mean, is that misogyny? Well, and Rosie O'Donnell is a very outspoken uh, hater of Republicans. So it, there's a thing between Republicans and her, and especially gun rights activists and her, which is funny because her bodyguards carry guns to her children's school. Okay, so it's apparently it's okay if you have enough money to pay someone else to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's perfectly okay for her bodyguards to take guns to school, but other people can't have guns in their home. Um, you know, if you leave a pig out in the wild for a couple of weeks, it turns <laughs> feral and becomes a wild boar. Um, <laughs> well, I think Trump would be really nice. You know, yeah. <laughs> you should have called her a feral, feral sow, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm calling her a feral sow. I'm not saying that. <laughs> it I'm seems to be a whole hate mail to Allison at Honey Badgers. <laughs> yeah. But this does seem to be the thing with Trump. They they ask him a question that is it's designed to trip him up like that, and then they claim that he's misogynistic because of his answer. Oh, he, he basically falls for that every single time because he's yeah. not really a politician. I'm going to do it again, Brian. I'm going to do the transition. Speaking of hate crimes against women, like Trump saying that, that Rosie O'Donnell is a fat pig, because apparently all women look like a Rosie O'Donnell, or Trump saying that women should be punished for crimes, because apparently the only crimes that women commit are abortion-related crimes, and when they do commit those crimes, they shouldn't be punished, and everything else that's apparently a hate crime against women because it comes out of Trump. You know, speaking of hate crimes against women, 
There, there. There's the segue. Someone right, jump on it. Trump couldn't have said that shit if he was in Nottinghamshire. Yeah. So Max, no. <laughs> Max, you want to comment on Nottingham? They would have. They would have. They would have no, no, I already did. Uh, Allison said she had some more information about that. that oh was, right, oh, yes, I I'll, did. I'll comment if I can, real quickly. Yeah, go ahead, oh. dude. Just really, really fast. Like this is the first thing I when um when you guys showed this like whatever a few days ago or whatever it was, like. I, I like I felt like I'm I'm living in an alternate timeline that kind of diverged in 1982 around the Reagan era, and we're in bizarre world right now. And it's like very soon we're gonna see a sustained look at somebody is gonna be considered a felony. It's gonna be considered a battery charge if you look at somebody too long. I mean, what in the fuck is going on? Where if you whistle at somebody or you say something to somebody, how is that a fucking hate crime? This is fucking insane. This kind of stupid shit opens the door for just fucking mass ridiculousness in legislation. I mean, this is just, I just don't even have words for this. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted by how no fucking ridiculous this you is. You can't even. I, I can't. My, I just don't even. I, I can't even. I don't even. I won't even. Yeah, your evens can't, can't even, even. Yes, can't. that thing, which you said. Yes, yes. <laughs> the thing that I said is coming out of my mouth. Right. All right. I mean, I recognize them as words, but I can't even. I just can't. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just failing, failing. Yes. Oh, like, we're, even... we're all over. Where the fuck are we? Like, seriously, what the fuck is going on? I mean, come right. on. Uh, okay, well, to, 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 to follow <laughs> on what Max was saying about me having something more to say, I do have something more to say. A few more things. I hope you don't mind, Max. Um, first of all, we talked to a resident of Nottinghamshire when we were in Nottinghamshire, and he's actually also a fan of, of the Honey Badgers. And he did a little bit of reconnaissance. He actually called the cops and asked, as a gay man, if a woman harassed me, do I, can I actually report it? And they said yes. Although I doubt that they're going to apply this equally. They did indeed say yes or that they would review it. So if you're a man in Nottinghamshire and you see a poster by uh, feminists, you know, a, a don't be that guy poster or whatever other kind of hate speech that they use against men to imply that they're all rapists or that um, domestic violence or rape are a man's issue rather than a human issue, you know, why don't you report that shit? You know, report that. And if if the Nottinghamshire uh, has a clause for tweeting hate speech, maybe report kill all men. Report some of that crap, because <laughs> if there's any kind of institutional hate speech going on, it's going one way, from feminists to men, and from, I guess, other, what you might term, gynocentric uh, uh, female victim pimping organizations towards men, by portraying men as the root of social problems which are, n are genderless. So uh, you know, if you're a guy in Nottinghamshire, take a, take a page out of our listeners' <laughs> our listener's book and start reporting it whenever a woman makes you feel uncomfortable. Maybe when Rosie O'Donnell makes a pass at you. That could be hate speech. You see what I did there? I, I don't mm. even know. I, I don't even think that's worth noting. I, I'm just going to shuffle away. Just go, Just if you live in Nottinghamshire, guys, just go live in the woods. I, I just want to point out that uh, that uh, Allison reinterpreted, reinterpreted the, the, the name of, of Nottinghamshire as Nottinghamsham Ham. <laughs> no, it's Nottinghamsham. Nottinghamsham, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Mike should be here to hear his <laughs> trying to say the name of this place. It's like it's like Rochestershire sauce, you know, like wait, wait, can we say that you know, feel like Yosemite Sam Nottingham So apparently I had several neurons fire backwards on that one. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, ham sham. Okay, let's call it ham sham. Recording ham sham. Yes, there we Morning, go. Recording ham sham. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, Max, go ahead. Yeah, Allison was all like English. Who needs that? I'm never going to England. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> when it comes to this particular story, like um, what uh, Scott said, it, it does sort of scare somebody like me because um, it's somebody who has, uh, like I mentioned many times before this uh, show, I have Asperger's syndrome. A common trait associated with that is, you know, maybe doing uh, socially inappropriate things without even realizing it. I know I've been uh, accused of um, staring at certain things or 
certain people for uh, an inordinate amount of time, and I've been criticized for that. And it's like, oh, I didn't mean any disrespect, right? If it became something as broad as that, it would um, be very terrifying for me. But it would also be very interesting because if I were to be criticized and persecuted for doing something as harmless as that, if I were to defend myself using the defense, the legitimate defense as having autism, that would sort of create a cognitive dis dissonance within the minds of these social justice warriors because they would either have to defend me because I have autism or they would have to attack me because of this uh, broad definition put forward by the police. So <laughs> in a certain sense, I sort of want this to happen. In another sense, I don't want this to happen. You know, I just it's it's all either side is very intriguing to me. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Um, right after that uh, thing about the Nottingham Sham thing came up, uh, Mike popped into the chat and said, "Just say Nottingham." So. Nottingham. Just say Nottingham. That's fine. You don't have to. No, say you don't have to add the Sham and the Nordic. You don't have to say Nottingham Shy required to wire Shamham the Hobbit. <laughs> you don't have to say. Shamham ding dong. There's no dark com in there. Dong. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. What about a zip code? You don't have to include that too. Yeah. What? A, no. Fuck those. Nording. Nording. Six zero five. A. Six seven five three zero nine. God. <laughs> Wait for the. It's gonna be black. You're black my mind. Really um, we gotta. We, we gotta move on. I know. Scott. No, 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 Same no, no, no. age. I think. I think if Hannah just keeps to her comment, she can get it in. She can. Yeah, speak it Hannah. In. You. I, you want to make that mention about about Nottingham? Which comment? Oh, you mean the, oh, the here, here we see yet another example of yes. feminists only being able to exaggerate the importance of something because they ignore that it happens to men and falsely claim that when it happens to women, it's because they're women. And also I think men in that area should just flood the police with reports because you have every opportunity, like Allison explained. Yeah, tur turn Nordingham Sham into a Nordingham <laughs> Slam. Go Actually, live in the Sherwood think, Forest and rob the the rich and no no rob forest. the government and give it to probably the is yeah. it probably is pronounced uh, Nottinghamshire. Yeah, well, you know, nobody nobody quote <laughs> me. You know, <laughs> Nottingham. I hadn't thought of that. Sure. I hadn't thought of it before either. But I think most people probably just okay. say uh, Nottingham. Nottinghamshire. Okay, let's just get this right, people. <laughs> scoot. Yeah, I think. Whatever. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 no, no, not scoot. Um, brain had something additional to say to this issue and then we move on? Maybe? Brain? Go ahead. I fucking forgot. <laughs> <laughs> brain isn't braining. Brain, brain is not braining I today. I think I, I don't remember. Uh, it, it doesn't matter then. We'll just go on to the next story. Um, we were going to met somebody want to talk about ISIS. So, ISIS. Scott. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the... the I have a, I have a, a lot in a lot of things to say about this, but I'm going to try and keep it kind of brief. Um, when 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 I was looking at the story, there's a couple of photos there, um, and there's a video also, but it doesn't really show anything. But the thing that strikes me about this these situations, because I've seen videos of stonings before, um, and the way that the the way that Sharia law is, um, well, okay, I used to work for NBC, right, and Part of the uh, part of the thing is we used to get um, unedited footage in, so we would see uh, like all these like hours and hours of footage of these events happening, and you, we'd have to edit out all the bad stuff and just use what we could that could actually go on air for when we were doing a story. So I've actually seen some pretty horrific things uh, that came from the Middle East, and the thing that I've noticed like and within these pictures it just reminded me of this is that. Um, when you see these experiences that these people are taking part in, when you see these stonings or you see um, public executions or, you know, of different varying types or how they um, will uh, amputate people's hands or, or foot or whatever when they get caught stealing or whatever it is, there is a noticeable lack of emotion across most of the crowd. I mean, firstly, it's kind of strange that you see these crowds that gather around for these events. They turn it into an event. It's like a, a you know, a, a public gathering of, you know, everybody, children and everyone. But something that I've noticed is that there is an almost complete lack of emotion when dealing with these situations. People are standing there holding rocks and throwing rocks at people's heads with no emotion. 
they are completely desensitized to the fact that they are committing murder. That they are, and I'm not saying this is across the board, but I, you know, I've seen this over the course of decades at this point. Like I said, when I used to work for NBC, I saw a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, and there's there's no emotion there. In a lot of the cases, there's no emotion. These people just do this like, oh, we're just going down to the park to go stone a guy with fucking rocks. We're going to fucking bash his skull in, or we're going to stone this woman, or we're going to cut this guy's hand off, and there's no emotion. The, the, the thing that is so bothersome about this to me is that the people taking part in these things are desensitized through the religion to think that this is okay. And this is fucking really scary. And this is why all this fucked up shit is happening right now. Um, it's just it. It's just kind of crazy. Um, I, I just I'm not really sure how else to how else to approach it other than to say that it's just it is really frightening that we are living in a modern society where technology has done amazing, wonderful things for medicine, for, you know, world health, for, you know, any number of things. And then we have a group of people that are stuck in the 16th century doing these horrific, inhuman things. And I'm just, yeah, I just, yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where a terrible thing happens regularly. I'm sure Allison has probably seen this because she lived there. Um, but there's a, a psychological phenomenon that happens with people in, who, who face a, a regularly occurring terrible thing like that where you dissociate from it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's if you're raised from the time you are a child around it, and it may not happen to everybody. Some people may have to sort of fake it in order to not be seen as, as an outsider in, in their own communities and, and a strange, perverse person in their own communities. But um, it's, it's, it's not a lack of emotion. It's a lack of outward response where you have to, you, you have to process your, your, um, your trauma by detaching yourself from the event. And um, you, you can actually, in a situation where it, it's regularly happening to you, or you're being forced to participate in something that you find completely and utterly repulsive, um, where you rationalize it and you uh, sort of push it away from yourself afterwards, um, where you kind of... And, and it's, I'm not articulating this very well, but, but you basically you're using psychological tools to deal with something that is too big and too bizarre for you to deal with. And well, the best way to do it is to actually separate your internal processes from what's happening. And you do go kind of blank. Well, you know um, what, though? I, I wonder if that's the case in this, in, in this scenario, though, because uh, with, uh, with the, uh, in regards to the religion, this is a lauded sort of thing. It's like people, they, they see this as a positive. So this was I, done I, in the I United States, too, though. I well, mean, okay. Was, it wasn't so with done, the witch burnings and things like yeah, that. Well, yeah. well, not just the witch burnings. I mean, it used to be that hangings were done publicly well, yeah, in yeah. some communities. Oh, and no, it, and it used to be that whippings were done publicly mm -hmm. for, for as punishment for, for things. This It wasn't quite the same sets of punishments. I mean, there were never crucifixions in the United States. There are cru crucifixions in the Middle East. Um, there were never uh, beheadings and things like that in the United States. But we still do execute, and we still do do it in front of an audience. Um, if if a person commits a murder, the victim's family has members of the victim's family and members of the press do have the opportunity to watch the murderer die. Right. If a person's convicted. And they didn't commit a murder. Um, they they still will die with an audience. And there have been in situations where reporters have had to come back and write about botched ex execution executions that are horrific. Um, there have been some situations where the the individual has uh, struggled in the course of the the execution because they were in severe pain and and suffering for several minutes. And um, it's made a difference in how Americans view execution 
because we have not been subject subjected to that regularly where we are, are, are expected to participate in something brutal and horrible. Um, so this is something that because they do this publicly, because they force the public to participate in it, that helps to perpetuate that cycle, that, that continued use of that punishment by forcing people to deal with it and forcing them to process it and, and putting them into that mentality where they separate themselves from it. And it'll actually take a, a bigger effort to stop it there than it did here, you know, in it where we we have worked very hard to try to find a met method of execution that's more humane and eventually I think the United States will eliminate executions because eventually we'll have to all admit that they are not humane, that there is no way to humanely execute a person. It's, it's, it's an oxymoron. A humane execution is an oxymoron. Um, but but I think that we will actually be able to to make that decision easier because not having been forced to participate in it, we have we have not developed that coping mechanism, that dysfunctional coping mechanism that that allows us to treat it as a normal human behavior. And the other thing I want to say about this, and this is really brief, discussion on the brutality of punishments in Islamic cult cultures really brings home society's gynocentrism in that society at large only seems to care when these things are done to women even when the majority of the victims of these brutal punishments are men and that's it for me I think that's that's a good place to go to the next which is also one of yours um, Hannah the uh, helicopter parenting you wanted to make a comment on it is well, it I think I made the basic yeah, I made I made the basic comment that I was going to make on that, and that and that it's it's really simple. You you cannot um, place expectations on your child that that are beyond your child's capacity, but you also cannot be afraid to push your child to strive and to be great. If my parents had not encouraged me to challenge myself and and stretch beyond what my immediate capacity was and improve my, my my capacity for things like running well I wouldn't have improved my capacity for breathing and I'd be dead so you give your child the benefit of you know of, of ex expectations that they can meet if they work hard and you teach your child the value of hard work but for crying out loud you know don't treat your child like a machine and there is a balance, and it's not that hard to to make that balance. And I don't think most parents uh, have this problem, you know, unless they get into a situation where they forget that their children are children, and they forget that their children are people, and they start trying to live through their children instead of living for them. And that's it. Okay, Brian. All right. Thanks, Hannah. So we were talking a little bit about all of the horrible, horrible things that Trump said in his on the campaign trail and in his life that people determined to tear him down have dug to find out. So let's see what Mary Claire calls the 20 most ridiculously, horrifically, holy shit quotes Donald Trump has ever spoken. Prepare yourselves cause, and have like, a, like an empty vessel of some kind nearby because you may get sick. Number one. Okay. I just have a question. Do, will, will I like have the urge to go get naked and run in a field after this? Yes. Oh shit! Sweet. There are tw there are twenty nine. So this oh, is my fuck. I thought by by a factor of nine. We might not oh, get can I problems. say one thing too about that? I, I I would I would really like to um encourage any protesters that want to protest like the next men's rights event or you know Gamergate event or anything like that. Please use this method. Yeah. Get naked. No way. I'll bring my camera, and, and we'll, we'll bring a hose. Yeah. Well, well the hoses guess... are already the ones that the hose are the naked people, right? Bring well, the, hose. the hose. The naked I've got the Vaseline. Naked. <laughs> if some people are naked, the rest should, you know, be in wet clothing. Yeah. There we know. go. I don't know if I really want that now that I think about it. <laughs> I don't know. I am navy. But I've got the Vaseline. 
Jello, Jello, a big Jello pit. Okay. Right, very large tub of Vaseline. I just want to put that out there. I think that I think that everybody just wants to get naked at the sound of Trump's voice. Okay. I don't know what I mean by that. All right, I, red, like, red, like shed your skin and die. Like, ah, it's so <laughs> gross. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there you go through the nakedness. Some people, some people want to get naked because they just want to feel clean again, and other people just want to get naked because they want their boobs to defeat them. Um, and then other people like Bernie in Karen's slash fiction just got naked because Karen. The urges. A, the urges. Right. Got, right. naked, got naked because Karen. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. I've injected the awkwardness. In. Oh. They're going to reverse motorboat him to death. That's when you slap someone to death with your boobs. Yeah. Motor modem. Okay. Explain <laughs> that to St. Peter. Okay, I think we got... Right. Or we, we're not going to get through all 29. Just I'm going to try. I got, okay. Number one. An extremely credible source has called my office and told me that Barack Obama's birth certificate is a fraud. Oh, my God. That's so terrible. But it's like equal to it's it's like equal to actually shooting at Obama, you know. He's he's if, Trump is is he's he's in big trouble now. Oh man, I mean, but what? if he did, he would they would still people would still vote for him. Mm. Um, well, well, maybe he's changed his mind since 2012. Yeah, maybe it's he's it's irrelevant. been it's been four years. Uh, number two, Robert Pattinson should not take back Kristen Stewart. She cheated on him like a dog, and will do it again. Just watched. He can do much better. Uh, that's probably What's good it? advice. I mean, I don't really yeah, agreed. See... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's no, no, no. Duh. It's mut, mut, mut misogynistic. Misogynistic. <laughs> okay, so it's what a mean thing to say about dogs. <laughs> it's okay to refer to men as dogs, but not women. Apparently, I think that's the key with that, that one. Yeah, because female dogs are bitches. Get the word right. Okay, <laughs> misogynistic. And, <laughs> and Trump knows bitches. <laughs> okay, go on. All right. Go on. Ariana Huffington is unattractive both inside and out. I fully understand why her former husband left her for a man. He made a good decision. <laughs> oh, burn. Oh, my God. I had no idea Trump stuck his head in Ariana Huffington. That is so gross. <laughs> um, I have a large thing of Vaseline. Hey, okay. Ariana Huffington, feel the burn. Okay, but here's the thing. That's just catty. It's not. I don't know what it, what they're trying well, to say. I mean, it's and it's some, it's something that Milo would say. You know? Yeah. It's it's well, a it's a, a Milo gold standard. So I don't think you can call that misogynistic. It maybe. Was mean. It was mean, but it's not. But so what? Yeah. And maybe, maybe she deserved it. Um. Okay. Number four. You know, it really doesn't matter what the media writes as long as you've got a young and beautiful piece of ass. Yep. <laughs> How are you gonna disagree with I mean, that? I mean, come on, let's let's be fucking completely honest here. He is not fucking wrong. No, and the no, mainstream not. press has proved that over and over again yeah. in their choices. Yeah, let's Trump let's look at Fox like News just as a very, yeah. Let's look at Fox News as a very you know codifying example. Everyone on there that's a woman is a pretty blonde-haired woman. I mean, there's like two. I think there's like an Asian lady and a black woman, but like. There's 78 blonde women for every one black woman and Asian woman there. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, maybe they're hiring the most qualified people, Scott. <laughs> name, name, name one fat middle-aged woman yeah. in in media today who, who you know who's who's hired by someone else. You know, not not owning her own empire and and giving cars away to people oh. and stuff, but actually employed by someone else. To be a news presenter, name well, one. And and I can tell you this from personal experience. I used to work for NBC, and the people that worked there, there were not any ugly on camera people. None. They had, they had unspoken hiring practices when it came to that sort of thing. So there's that. All right. Next one, number six. I'll build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me. Believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will make Mexico pay for that wall. Mark my words. He's going to build it inexpensively. Huh? Who's he going to hire to do that? He's going to hire Mexicans. I know where you're going with that. 
He's going to hire Filipinos. Uh, yeah. I have one thing, one thing to say about the entire uh, immigration debate. The biggest argument that I, the one that I hear the most, I should say, it's not really the biggest argument, but the argument I hear the most from left-wingers about I illegal immigration is that we need to bring these people in to do jobs Americans wouldn't do at prices Americans wouldn't wouldn't accept to do those jobs. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me that sounds like you're talking about importing a, a wage slave class, which is extremely racist, and I'm deeply offended by it. That's I'm it. also deeply offended by this thing. I don't know. I, I'm having a hard time getting offended at any of these. Yeah, it's, yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, logically how it would work, but no, I don't see it. I'm not Ariana Huffington. Walls so. are spacist. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's, 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 okay. let's move motor, motor. All right, let's get through it. Number seven. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending the best. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. Again, well, that's like the most popularly like used quote of his. And I don't know. I'm not seeing, like, I know it sounds, uh, it may sound bad to people who aren't really thinking about it, but there is evidence that shows that Mexico literally is sending bad people. Like, and, and they're also putting them in a great deal of danger because they, they have to travel with coyotes and bad stuff happens to... Coyotes? Oh, no. Well, yeah. They travel in the trunks of cars and, and yeah. in compartments made in trucks that don't have enough, you know, airflow. And there are people, there are, there are incidents that don't really much make the news where uh, trucks with these compartments in them, with, with immigrants in them, um, they get across the border and the immigrants are dead because they didn't have enough oxygen and they got they got dosed with carbon monoxide and they got poisoned to death. Um, but there's also an issue, the big issue with uh, immigrant crime is this. If an, Im a, a, an illegal immigrant commits a crime, is not necessarily sub subject to the same uh, justice system processes as a citizen is. But because of the way the federal laws have been manipulated, if, if he's not 150 people, it's very difficult to deport him. So we're stuck with they commit these crimes, they get arrested, the cops can't do anything to them, and they can release them back into the public. So when they are criminal, it's a huge problem. There's nothing that can be done about it. But there are many ways that can, that can be addressed. And aside one of them from, would be subjecting them to the same process as a citizen. Yeah. Uh, aside from the fact that basically 100% of the people who do cross the border illegally are criminals. Because they committed right. the crime of crossing the border. But, I mean, uh, I'm, of course, I'm talking about like committing a, a crime where there's a victim, a violent crime, things like sure. that. You, know, you break into somebody's house or things like that. All right. Number eight. Our great African-American president hasn't exactly had a positive impact on the thugs who are so happily and openly destroying Baltimore. This is considered mm -hmm. a racist out outburst. You mean the uh, sons of, uh, of single mothers? Yeah, the sons of single mothers who have been allowed to run rampant um, in Baltimore. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know... I think we just made it way more offensive. It's if it walks like a duck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Next one. Uh, number nine. If I were running the View, I'd fire Rosie O'Donnell. I mean, I'd look her right in her fat, ugly face of hers, and I'd say, "Rosie, you're fired." Apparently, this is misogyny, according to <laughs> Mary Blair. Okay. Oh God, please do not tell us that Rosie O'Donnell represents all women, because that's oh just God. offensive. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty offensive. Can't we it's, choose who represents all women? We found two things to offend me today. This is something you should put on the calendar, because that's really hard to do. Okay, number ten. John, I, I think, think we have to. I think Trump was really nice, because if I was if I was Trump and I owned the View, I would cancel the fucking show. Yeah. Um, okay, so 10. I, you want to stop at 10? Yeah, I want to stop at 10. Yeah, let's stop at 10. All the women on The Apprentice flirted with me, consciously or unconsciously. 
That's to be expected. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, God. 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 Winning. <laughs> oh, narcissist much? Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't know. You know what? It's possible that that, that that may have happened on on some level if they were looking to hopefully like use that to oh, that's right. one of those things where you can oh. win, right? Like right, if you're yeah, like, yeah. the last person standing. I yep. could see it. It's it's yeah. not like women ever, ever in any other circumstance flirt with wealthy, powerful men. That doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. So Never. saying that is total misogyny because women just don't do that. They don't identify the richest, most powerful man in the room as the person to flirt with. And yeah. they certainly wouldn't just naturally do it. Well, yeah, I mean, they, look at Trump. They wouldn't naturally do it, I don't think, anyway. You know, I think there's a certain oh, no, argument no. to be made there. But, you know, money is certainly <laughs> not the ultimate aphrodisiac for, for women who are, are <laughs> upwardly mobile, you know, ambitious women. That that just doesn't happen. Wait, you're being it sarcastic never, right now. never, ever you know? overcomes a, a degree of unattractiveness or age or, or yeah, you know, you're being personality. Sarcastic. No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen. It just doesn't. Women are angels, and no, they I'm, never, I'm, ever, I'm ever act sure. like that. I'm pretty sure that's sarcasm. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm well, gonna... what, what, I mean... Ah, I want to say something. God damn it. Say All something. Right. You just said okay. something. Say something. Nick, I know, but women Oops. would never, never in a million years use their sexuality to try to manipulate Trump. Uh, you know, they they would never get nude in an attempt to shame him. To you know, the, oh. these, the, these women would never do that. Bravo, never. Allison. Bravo. Ha! <laughs> I was gonna say that, but but you just doesn't me. happen. <laughs> women are always well behaved. Well, yeah. Well, you know, just it's like yeah, they, they, women would never conceive of doing that ever. There are no women out there with their boobs out trying getting to their pictures taken. Yeah, getting their pictures taken, trying to compel. Something out of Trump. Hmm. I, no, no, it's nothing. No, that doesn't happen. Yeah, you know, Hugh Hefner at 84 is a total minx. <laughs> <laughs> what? A minx. Well, no, it's just like, you know, like. I was the oldest one here. That was what? Oh, okay. Minx. Minx. Well, anyways. No, but also, like, how do we know that he wasn't just telling a joke? It's not unusual for people to inflate their ego for the sake of humor. I mean, like, I do it all the time, except it's mm. not a joke. But, anyways. <laughs> hey, oh. No, no, okay. politicians are always serious. They're always, yeah, they're always yeah, never They never long. joke. They okay, never speak. Speaking of minx. <laughs> I think it's speaking of minx. Sorry, or it's fox, minx. whatever. Yeah. A fox. Well, uh, minx isn't usually applied to men, but I, I you know. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll work with it for a transition. Really? I've had people call me a minx. Never uh, mind. I'm, I'm, no, there was nothing. I couldn't say anything to that. Do you identify as I couldn't as either. Minx? I, you already know what I identify as. Yeah, but you could uh, um, identify you as. You could identify men. as a yellow minx. True. You could be yeah. like you. You don't have to deny your your Simpson kinness. You can always be like a. Simpson minx. Simpson minx. Um, uh, a minxin. A minxin. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. I think we're done. I think we're done. Uh. Then? Shall I take us out? Yeah. Let's let's well, just just take those sinuous bastards. No, Brian, don't out. shoot. <laughs> Oh, yeah, prepare yourself. No, I mean like violent Mexicans. Out. Speaking of violent Mexicans, <laughs> they, I'm, they're sending me. Um, so we just tried like a new format. Tell us what you think. Where we uh, have it sort of set up a different way, and we're gonna try and get the shows done in a much timelier fashion. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Also, feel free to comment on the stories. There are links below. And I want to thank uh, my co-hosts. And I want to thank myself for coming on. And uh, now we're going to go into the post show for the extra story about awesome. Ghostbusters 2. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, uh, please donate to the become a patron. And there is a link to the patron um, up in the upper right hand corner. I think I'm looking at it right now. It's over there. So we will hopefully see you in the after show where you can discuss further stories and maybe get into the ones we already did talk about. So uh, with that, have a good night, and we'll talk to you guys next time.